magic. So today we are delving into the element of air magic, which is our final element for this month that we're covering. I can't believe June is over so soon already. It's crazy. Um, and I'm so sorry to say goodbye to this topic, but July is going to be super, like so much fun. So let's just dive into the element of air um, and start with some correspondences. So the direction that is associated with this element is the east. So if you have tools representing the air um, and you want to put them in a specific place on your altar, a lot of Wiccans um, put them like on the eastern facing part of their altar. I don't really do this, um, but I'm not a Wiccan. Some witches still hold this. It's completely up to you how you organize your altar. It's just an idea. Um, the energy is similar to fire in that it is creative energy. Um, the zodiac signs associated with this sign, with, uh, excuse me, the zodiac signs associated with this element are Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. The tools are the wand, incense, and the bell. So some crystals that are associated with air are topaz, quartz, amethyst, citrine, and amber. And finally, some ritual workings that are associated with the air are intuition, wisdom, knowledge, prayer, divination, and cleansing. Um, so let's just dive into kind of like do a deeper dive on some of the ritual workings that are associated with the air element, right? So let's start with cleansing. Um, it's kind of the most iconic of all air magics in my mind, like smoke cleansing is. Um, so smoke cleansing is when you ritually burn herbs or incense and waft the smoke throughout your space. Remember guys, like no white sage, no palo santo, they are endangered, so be sure if you're using them, you're getting them from a sustainable source. Um, and please respect the cultures that they come from and like learn about them. Um, Anyways, I've been cleansing with myrrh incense recently um, in honor of Bast and Anubis, and it's been really great. My go-to is usually rosemary. Um, the idea of smoke cleansing is to purify the air physically and cast out negative energy. Um, the reason sage is used so often, again, not against common sage. Common sage is totally cool, um, but like let indigenous people have white sage, please. Like guys, please. So the reason that sage is used so frequently is because the plant itself actually has air purifying qualities. Um, it drives out sickness and I suspect that the smoke drove away like any sort of critters that like carry disease, mosquitoes, rats, etc. especially back in the ancient days. Um, if you ever read anything about the Black Death, you know that it was um, pretty awful. <laughs> um, but anyways, like the smoke driving away these critters um, thus removed the evil or sickness from the house. Um, and today it is mostly used to cleanse one's sacred space. You can cleanse however often you like. I would like to cleanse at least twice a day, but alas, I don't really think that's going to happen. Um, sound and vibrations are also really powerful in terms of cleansing before a ritual. And I actually have a full video planned um, for this that is going up like tomorrow or up next if you're a patron. <laughs> um, but I want to make note of that at least that sound and vibration is also a an element of air magic that can be used in the stead of smoke cleansing in case you are sensitive to smoke. Cause I get it, my mom really like hates incense and stuff like that. So sound cleansing or maybe using a cleansing mist like we talked about earlier this month might be the right way for you to do your cleansing rituals. So yes. So the next magic I want to talk about is wish magic. Now, I know we've all made a wish and blown out a candle before on like a birthday cake or perhaps like blown on like a white fluffy dandelion. I'm sure we've all done it as kids. But the birthday cake, like birthday candle tradition actually dates back to the ancient Roman era. Candles were wished upon and blown out on one's birthday. And it is believed that the smoke actually carried up the prayer or the wish to the gods. Um, and I actually use this method in my practice kind of um, by burning bay leaves with intentions or prayers written on them and letting the smoke carry said intentions up to my deities. Dandelions are used mostly for fun, but I do love blowing on them and making wishes still. It's kind of like a really great reminder of simplicity, like the simplicity of childhood. And it, it kind of just makes me happy. I don't know. There's something about going like, like <laughs> not spitting, but like, you know, blowing really hard on a dandelion and watching everything. I don't know. I'm five years old guys. Like <laughs> it's fine. Um, so the next magic I want to talk about is communication. Um, air magic has actually a lot to do with communication. And now that we've finally exited Mercury retrograde, which is so hard for me to say, I don't know why. Um, like the way, like our communication is finally good again, hopefully it's going a little bit easier for you, but the way we speak matters, right? Um, speaking things into existence, like doing morning affirmations is a great way to incorporate air magic into your practice. Um, Using your own breath in communication spells is a great method as well. So like blowing across things, um, like let's say you have a big presentation 
uh, at work and you are deciding to employ air magic to help you with that, instead of relying on ambient air, you can actually direct your attention for a successful meeting or successful presentation um, by speaking it into existence or using your own breath to consecrate something. So by taking a charm and blowing on it, that is, you know, imbuing that thing with your physical energy and intention. So just a little tip and it's like simple enough to do, right? So just little witch things. Um, and finally, I wanted to talk about creativity magic. I think that the element of air is really conducive to creating specific atmospheres, which I'm going to be talking about a lot this week, so get used to hearing about that. Um, when I'm in need of a creative boost, I actually burn specific incense with clove and orange in it to give me that energy I really need to push through projects. Um, using the element of air to create your own private universe through smell, sound, and even touch if we consider like air temperature as a facet of the ritual atmos atmosphere is an incredible way to bring the this element into your craft. So I know this is kind of a shorter video. I work with the element of the air at like the least, like admittedly. Um, I think it's because I'm an earth sign and I have little to no air like in my chart, uh, but it is a really versatile element. If you've worked with this element, I would love to hear more about it from your perspective. Um, and yeah, tomorrow we're gonna be ch chatting all about sound cleansing and I'm very excited about that. So I will see you guys tomorrow and uh, yeah, have a great Friday, bye.